1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Welcome to Casting Cares, a weekly radio show devoted to life issues and relationships. Your hosts, Pastor Gerald and Merrill Lee Hagerman, are here to answer your questions from God's Word. Email your questions to castingcaresradio.com. So grab a cup of coffee, turn up the radio, and let's get started. Good morning. This is Pastor Gerald Hagerman. And this is Merrill Lee. And we are from Joshua Springs Calvary Chapel in Yucca Valley, California, and we are so glad that you tuned in this morning. How are you doing today, Marilee? I'm doing great, Gerald. How are you doing? Oh, super. And we are so glad that you've tuned in this morning. Again, this next half hour is going to be devoted to your questions on life issues and relationships. And the way that you contact us is to go to castingcaresradio.com. Again, email us your questions to castingcaresradio.com. You can also join us on Facebook and become our friends on Facebook. And all of our programs are archived on both of these uh, 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 locations. We are, uh, the program is designed to be able to go ahead and give you just some answers from God's Word on maybe some relationship problems you're having, maybe some issues going on in your life, and that you really can't get to a pastor. It's never designed to take in place of a pastor's counseling service, but it is for those of you out there that have faced something maybe you're too embarrassed to talk to your pastor about, but you want to remain anonymous. And that is totally your your prerogative here on this show. You can just go ahead, say, don't uh, mention my name, don't put your name, Make up a name and uh, whatever you want to do, and we'll just go ahead and try to give you some common sense from God's Word. That's right. You know, uh, for those of you that are are listening and have been following along, we told you that we were going to Greece, and we We did. We did, and we (laughs) just got back. (laughs) Merrily, what did you love most about the trip? Uh, You know, this trip that we went on to Greece, uh, I seriously was ministered to in a way that I hadn't felt in a really long time. I think it was comparable to the first time I went to Israel. Israel. Uh, this trip to Greece, uh, the this one that we went to, for some reason, I don't know, I was going to uh, St. Lydia. I just could picture her selling there and a businesswoman, and I was a businesswoman. And so I know what that feels like. And then all of a sudden, she grasps salvation through Paul's message and right there to stand where Lydia was selling purple. And I, I love that part. And then I, when I went to all the different places where Paul was scourged and to actually see the posts and the pillars where he was tied up and beat for the name of Jesus Christ and how much value our salvation has. I think it really just secured in my heart uh, just how wonderful to be able to live in a free country where we don't get arrested for loving Uh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) Let's hope it never happens. Well, you know, and that's the other thing you see civilizations rise and fall and then, You know, predominantly Uh, what we're looking at are ruins from civilizations that were once ruling the world. And that's a very powerful lesson as well. That was a pastor's familiarization trip. It was amazing. And the people we met, oh my goodness, we just feel like family now. I know it. Uh, A special hi to all of them out there. That's right. Presbyterians from the East Coast, Evangelical Free, other Calvaries. so fun. uh, You know, people from other denominations. It's such a wonderful time. And what's a wonderful about those trips for pastors. And in one of them, uh, someone in their church had been listening to our radio program and paid their way to go. Isn't that amazing? And we have some exciting news. We're going to be doing another pastor familiarization tour. We'll give you the exact dates and costs here in a couple of weeks. But in Italy, where you can see the Roman Forum, the Colosseum, again, uh, the, the footsteps Vatican. of Paul, <laughs> the Vatican, uh, those yeah. types of things. And it truly is the best education you can give to your mm-hmm. pastor uh, to be able to do that. And the companies greatly discount these so that pastors can go and then end up taking their churches back. And it's so it's so fun because I know that this year you're really working on getting a Christian guide in Rome, yeah. which is so different than just maybe taking a, a guided tour with right. some Romans or, you know, those that are over there for the Italians, but to actually have a believer say, this that, is right here where they were beat. And this is right here. That's, that's what, what we really had in Greece out. that our guide Big in difference. Greece was <laughs> was like having the Apostle Paul oh, with us. Oh, it was us. just so, amazing. A wonderful, wonderful time. And uh, again, uh, we have some comments from... Uh, 
uh, some questions that we did uh, prior to going to Greece. And it, it's interesting because the, the question was there was a, a great age difference between uh, the, the guy and the woman that were wanting to get married and what we thought about that. We really got some great comments. And again, if you want to write to us, it's castingcaresradio.com. And every week we have a chime in question on Facebook where you can put your, your posts and comments on what we're talking about. And so, um, here, here is one of them that we want to read from that question about having a great age difference. And uh, again, we're not going to use the names on these, but this is a chime in response. I'm about to pursue a premarital relationship with a person who is 16 years older than I. I am 37 and she's 53, never married. We met 16 years ago in college. We were both in love with each other when we first met. Wow. Now our love is stronger than it was then. So I believe that it is proper for us <laughs> to pursue this marriage since our love is well tested. It has the qualities of the love of God. I believe it's been placed there by God in order to make us one. That's a great comment. And that's what we like to encourage out there is those that have you know, just ideas and what they're going through. And you know what? Maybe age is, you know, our love is ageless. I don't know, Gerald. What's the next one? The next one, this says, just a comment on your segment about age difference in marriage. My late husband was 20 years older than I, wow. and we were friends in a professional setting for 13 years before we, quote unquote, discovered each other and Aww. married. He was the love of my life, Aww. and it was though that we were two sides of the same coin. We thought alike, finished each other's sentence, enjoyed the same activities, the same music. He oh, helped bring uh, me to the Lord when I was 32 years old, and I could go on and on. We loved, we laughed through 24 years mm. until cancer took him home at the age of 79. Oh. The only bad thing about our age difference was losing him way too soon. Aww. I became a widow at 57, and you too know what that's like. Mm. I have since remarried a longtime friend who is closer to my age, and I'm so thankful for the companionship. For anyone contemplating marriage to a true soulmate, whatever the age, <laughs> I would say don't miss out on a minute of the joy and give God the glory for bringing you together. Good for you. That's a perfect letter. So I guess age doesn't matter as long as you both love Jesus and, and you're putting God first. And you've been led together. Uh, every marriage has pitfalls and different things along the way, whether family agrees or they don't agree. You could even be the same age and family doesn't like it. So, you know what? Just put God first and he will direct your path. You know, it, it's it's very important. And in, in this situation, we see two different sides of that coin. One where the woman was uh, much older and the other one where the man was much older. And again, for those of you that are listening, Marilyn and I know exactly what that's like. We were both married for 31 years. Our spouses both went home for uh, with to the Lord with cancer. And now we've been married for three years. And Marilyn, we've often talked about this, but how much life we have lived in the last three years. Oh, yeah. And to think that we would have just stayed home and, and been very sad. I mean, it, it, some people remain single the rest of their lives. And that's God's will. And, and that's God's, God's plan. will. So, you know, what, however the Lord's leading you, but that's going to lead us into our next question. So, Gerald, what do we have? All right. And again, if you would like to write us, it's castingcaresradio.com. And uh, you can go on Facebook as well and become our friend on Facebook. Okay, Marilee, this this one's a, a we're going to get a lot of response on this, this one. In, huh? This is going to be our chime in. Okay. And we'll qualify how we want the responses on our, our chime in. But okay. my husband told me last night that he finds our love life boring. I am heartbroken. And it says because he says it's because we have a routine, so to speak. Mm. Same old, same old. I'm afraid he's gotten back into pornography and is wanting me to do what they do. I can't. I'm afraid of that because I can't or is it I won't. 
that I, I and I'm afraid that I might lose him. And I have needs too. I don't know what to do. My first instinct is to be hurt and get angry towards him. We had a fight and we are currently not speaking. I don't know what to do. And before we get into this part of the question, Merrily, I do want to address something out there, and that's pornography. I want every single Christian to know something. Pornography is sin. Pornography will never add anything to your marriage. It will take away. It will take away from your marriage. It is absolutely destructive. Jesus unequivocally lays it out that it is a sin. So in trying to improve marriage and a love life, uh, that is something that... Uh, will will never ever happen and never do so that's the first thing that we want to do you know i know in the world merrily marriage counselors will even suggest couples watch pornography together but pornography is addictive it is destructive and there isn't any part of this that that should be a part of our our married life well, and you know, I want to just speak into her heart right now because in her letter, she mentions two times that she's afraid. And, you know, first of all, I want you to understand that your God, the one that created you, does not want you to live in fear. And what's happened is this has creeped into your marriage. And I don't know if it, if he's stating this from watching pornography or if this is just truly something he feels. But what it has put upon your heart is fear. And so we know that that fear coming to you is from the enemy. And we're never to live in fear, especially in our marriage, where that should be the safest, most wonderful, warmest place in the entire universe. You should not have fear in your marriage, whether it's in your um, bedroom or whether it's in the kitchen and they're abusing you. That should never ever have fear in your marriage. You never should be afraid of your spouse. And so first of all, I want to address that, that that needs to be corrected. Second of all, what I want to bring up is that, you know, I don't know if he's looking at the pornography and all we can talk to you about is from maybe not. So we can maybe address other Christians out there that are listening to this where the husband's unsatisfied. It's the same old, same old. I really do think that marriage, and especially in the intimate issues, is things that you have to work on. Right. I, I don't think we can take for granted that we have to actively look for the good in our spouse. You know, to look for the kindness. Look for the sweetness. Look for what attracted you to that person in the first place. Remember when they were your hero. Go back to why you fell in love with them. What was it with that person and to remind ourselves of them and you know in the bible it says hebrews 13 4 it says marriage is honorable among all and the marriage bed is undefiled but fornicator fornicators and adulterers will be judged that we never and that actually means undefiled i looked it up gerald it actually means unsoiled it, that means that it's clean but we never want to introduce into our habits of love making and intimate practices things that make you feel lowered or things that make you feel uh, embarrassed. That's not of God either. So you have to come to that balance to where you are both comfortable with each other because you should never feel uh, dirty when you walk away from being with your husband. You should always feel clean, nurtured, and loved. And so I think that's what she's bringing up here. She doesn't want to bring in practices that maybe he's seen elsewhere in pornography and then bring them in to their bedroom because you can't measure up. Well, and that's the thing that I was going to say, even with, with television, what is portrayed on television, what's portrayed on the movies is not real. Yes. What is portrayed in pornography is not real. They get paid lots of money. They get paid lots of money. they're at every angle you can possibly think of to look great, and they leave out all of the um, unpleasantries. That's right. And it's evil. It is evil, and it is sin. And again, that will not enhance a marriage. Now, with that being said... God created intimacy within marriage. And, you know, it's not a dirty thing because here's what happens. In the book of Genesis, in chapter 2, in verse 25, well, first of all, let me back up. Uh, 
what I call the four musts of marriage. It's in Genesis chapter 2, 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. They were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So God created intimacy to be within marriage and to be pleasurable. We're not like the animals that just, you know, mate and, and procreate out of coming into heat and that type of thing. Huh. It, it is something that God has created to be a nurturing and a giving part. But uh, as you're listening out there, here's the big key. And the big key is that we give of ourselves to the other person. So it's not that even in our intimacy that we go into it in what we can get out of it, but what we can be pleasurable to the to the other person and make them feel wonderful. And so that's, that's I think, the key. It's not a selfish act. And I think that's what this guy is trying to do, is try to make it a selfish act. So... Yes, and that's what you... And like we said before, and I said before, it's never to lower yourself. That's right. And, and to feel um, that this is something you, you're feeling bad about, that there should be that common thinking together. And so uh, basically our advice to you is the communication is broke down somewhere. I would sit down and talk with him a little yes. bit about what's going on and, <laughs> and maybe, you know, stress to him that I fear that maybe you're looking at pornography right. again and that's why you're not satisfied. And then, you know, read the Song of Solomon's and remember the passion and remember that you love him and that you want to be with him and no one else other than him and do the little things. You know, the, often it says, you know, how things are going on in the bedroom at night reflect at breakfast in the morning that's right you know and so that you're kind to each other and that you're well, loving to each other during the day and i think that especially for a woman that's the most important thing uh, it, for a woman it is that that romance it's the you telling me that you and love he probably me probably isn't romancing and, her and i'll and bet that's you. right you're taking me out for dinner you're buying me flowers you're you're telling me I'm wonderful. Exactly. That you're telling me I'm a blessing, and so there is. So it, then she starts to feel just taken advantage of. That's right. And hurting, and you know, and then she's fearing he's wanting other you know, things. It's it's kind of funny because with everything that is out there uh, on this subject, people are very intimidated to be able to talk to each other, and there is a part where people have to be able to communicate together in every area of their life. I really would suggest also that you sign up for a marriage retreat at your church. That's right. I'm hoping that Calvary's are doing this. I know that many Calvary chapels have couples retreats. And the more that you can have, the better, because it does remind you of the steps to take to really appreciate each other, to make your marriage more secure than ever. And what I love about our marriage retreat, Sterile, is how you have you remarry them at the end. Yeah. They all recite their vows and hold hands and touch their rings and and they all remarry each other that they do it all over again and one time i remember looking out the window at this couple that went out to be alone together and they were sitting on a bench and he actually was on his knees and he had his hands oh, yes. on her lap and he was, was just gazing at her it was the most romantic action i think i'd seen in and he so was just, long yeah he, and was he didn't think anybody and... saw him he was out there just kind of off to himself with him and his wife over into the garden area and on his knees just adoring her and i thought you know what that's what adoring means is when they are just giving it he didn't care who watched she didn't think anyone was around but he didn't really care he was adoring her and she was just beaming she was so happy and so if you have a marriage retreat out there that you can attend that's right and gerald when is ours coming up do you have the dates on that if anyone needs to come yeah it you're will California, be in the spring join time. Us. Yeah, it'll be in the springtime. I don't have those exact dates right now. But, you know, and again, that covers the gamut of marriage, which is so important. You know, there is an inspired book of the Bible that is the Song of Solomon that is a very, very romantic book. And, you know, there's different ways to look at it, but there is, you cannot not look at it as a loving relationship between a husband and a wife. And uh, so I think it's important that we look at that. There's several great books out there. One is Intended for Pleasure. Another book is called The Act of Marriage. Uh, so these are great books that are Christian-based to deal with issues and problems. That will because, help, too. You want to repeat those names again, Joe? Yeah, it's Go called slow. The Act of Marriage. The Act of Marriage. We can't think of the... Uh, 
author right now, but you can Google it. The Act of Marriage. And Intended for Pleasure. And Intended for Pleasure. And those are just great books that deal specifically. (laughs) Yes, and that's the important thing. Specific books. So... This is our chime in question. Okay. And again, we, we this the is good a, times roll. This is a Christian program. We wanted only Christian yeah. things yeah. And, and and in terms of generalities. Nobody so how should is get, you as Christian couples? Nobody should get too specific on a chime in question on this. But how in Christian exactly. terms can you grow in your love for each other? Exactly. And if you've got some, you know, we go to dinner, we light candles, we yes. play in wonderful Spread music. Spread rose petals, yeah, you know, whatever. sometimes Maybe a give change of idea. location, you know, those things are special. But I, I think, again, one of the most important things about all of this, it's never selfishness. Marriage is not intended to be selfish. It's not it's, about you. It's not about you. It's... It's wives respecting your husbands. It's husbands loving your lives. And if wives, wives and which if, is your life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and what the book of Ephesians lays down in that superstructure of marriage, it is a 100 percent commitment of giving yourself to the other person. And it's a little bit of picture of what God has done for us. That's why marriage is such a is always under attack within the Christian realm because it is a picture of Jesus Christ's love for the church. And again, it is a self-giving love of which when we do that, we get more in return than what we could ever dream or imagine. So again, that's our chime in question for the day. And uh, we we would love to hear from you. And we, we thank the Lord for all of those Christian marriages out there that desire to grow in every way and be a uh, be a blessing. So if you would like to write us, castingcaresradio.com or go to Casting Cares Radio on Facebook. And that brings us to... Our, our last question of the day, and it is this. Please tell me why I am attracted to losers. I am a Christian. I have a great job, and I'm told I'm pretty. And yet somehow I always find myself dating a person who doesn't work, has anger or alcohol issues or whatever else. I don't feel like I seek these people out. Do I have some weird issue or what? <laughs> Well, you know, we had mentioned this briefly at a previous program that we were going to delve into this a little bit more. And actually, there are ways and there's reasons why you are thinking the way you are. Uh, A lot of times it's programmed into us as we're children. If you had a dad that was abusive to you and said mean things to you and you're comfortable with that, then sometimes if you're in a relationship as you get a little older and they're mean to you and they're abusive to you, that is a nature you are used to accepting. Also, it has, you know, if, if, your, hus- if your daddy well, and was... And sometimes people pr- expect to be treated that way. Well, like they, they just deserve think that's how it is. Treated that and the way. same thing it is with, you know, some uh, maybe a daddy wasn't present in your life and so you have nothing to judge off of what a good marriage is or what a good relationship is so you accept what you've been handed and then you know comes the ones that have had the nurturing loving christian daddy that has adored them and they know what to put up with and they know when it's wrong and so what i want to say to your heart is it could have been a learned uh personality trait that you have come up with and i there are scriptures in the bible that we need to uh remember the one that comes to my mind gerald is do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God for you. You need to transform the way you're thinking and align it up to what Jesus is. Do you see Jesus treating somebody the way your spouse is treating you or your, the person that you're dating? Do you see Jesus being rude? Do you see Jesus, the renewing of your mind, being transformed, changing the way you thought about how love was supposed to be? And the reality of it is how love is. And God wants us to know that we are a treasured, peculiar person and that he adores us and we're to be treated with nothing but the best. And that's where, Marilee, this is where so many couples make a mistake. They become intimate 
then they feel in somehow locked in and trapped in this situation. That's why That's why God, God doesn't want you to mess around before that, you get married. That's right. God doesn't want you doing that before you get married because then you get married out of guilt. Yeah, yeah, and and things go on. And if you're dating and you're seeing some things that are alarming you, you can't break away because then you're all right. wrapped up with all these emotions. That I must love him. And really deep down you don't love him and you can't see clearly what's annoying you. That's right. <laughs> well, and, and if it's there when you're dating, it's not going to go away in marriage. It's got to be dealt with. Yes. You know, that's why the Bible says don't marry an unbeliever. You know, I've, I've seen so many young people go, oh, well, they're almost or, a Christian. Uh, you flaky. know, they, yeah. they, they come with me sometime. I know if I marry him, they'll come on through and be I'm a Christian. No, it isn't going to happen that way. Because, again, it's not God's perfect will because God's word it says don't do that then there's those that are a christian because you're a christian yeah. and i can look back in my life and remember everybody became a christian or d people i was dating because i was a christian and they came along with me and the minute we broke up they never came back to church they could right. care less whatever happened they weren't sitting there in church or even going to a different church and walking with the lord and i want to say something the most important decision outside of asking jesus in your heart to be your lord and savior is who you marry. So that needs to be bathed in prayer and you need to make sure that you're not making a mistake. So let's renew our mind and think differently about the way we're to be treated and know you are not supposed to end up with a loser or someone that treats you cruel. That's and right. And it may be in your past that you have accepted this, but now we are Christians. Now you are a strong woman of God. You're putting on a new thought pattern. You're aligning with the way they treat you with what God says. And the last scripture I want to share on that is first Peter chapter two, verse number nine. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Mm. So everyone has a value, a yes, great value do. in Don't the settle Lord. For somebody that's so cruel to you. half hour flew by so fast. And if you want to travel with Marilee and I, our next trip that anyone can come and be a part on is a trip to Ireland in September. The brochures are on our website, castingcaresradio.com or Facebook, Casting Cares Radio. God bless you and have a great week. Love Jesus and go to church. Thanks for tuning in to Casting Cares. Pastor Gerald and Mary Lee will be here next week at the same time to answer more of your questions on life issues and relationships. Email questions to castingcaresradio.com. And remember 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you.